Hi, I'm Luke, and today our scripture lesson is Luke 2, 25 through 35. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple and when the parent brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word for my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the gentiles and for glory to your people Israel and the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that in inner thought of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Um. When I'm thinking about um, young people, uh, whether they're in college, whether they're working, uh, whatever they're doing, um, I, I have this conviction that God has a destiny for you all, okay? And that's not always something you're going to hear, but I believe that God has a destiny for you. And, and it's a reminder to me that God has a destiny for every single one of us. It doesn't matter um, if we're 19 and going to school someplace, or if we're 22 and we're working a job, or if we're 82, God has a destiny for you. And that destiny is embedded deep in your soul. It's a destiny that's been breathed into you by the Holy Spirit. And this is important to get this and understand this because it's why so many of us lack peace, lack joy, lack happiness in our lives is because we have failed to understand that the Holy Spirit has breathed a God-inspired destiny into our very soul. For some of you, your destiny was breathed into your soul before you were even born. We see several stories about that in the scripture. For some, your destiny was revealed through conversations with a whole variety of spiritual people in your life. And for some, your destiny was exposed during much time spent in discerning prayer. But I want you to hear this. You have a God-breathed destiny. You have a God-breathed destiny. When we're 15 years old, we dream of making a difference in our world. We believe that dream will happen and we have no doubts about it. When we're 25 years old, we are even a little more 
confident of ourselves and that God breed destiny because now at 25 years old, we're convinced that we are the one person that God will use to make the one difference the world needs most. That's how we are when we're 25. And then when we're 35 years old, we're pouring all of our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual strength into making that difference that God has breathed into us. Now also at 35, and this is a secret, so you can't tell anybody this part, but also when we're 35, there is an occasion or two that come along when we're not sure it's all going to happen, but we dare not breathe that to anyone When we're 45 years old, we've not given up on making a difference. We've not given up on that destiny that the Holy Spirit has breathed into us. However, we're beginning to kind of scale back on on the scope and the size of all of that. Just very calculated and careful. And when we're 55 years old, we realize that we're probably not going to make as big a splash or a big a difference in the, in the world that, that we dreamed and that we believed was God's destiny for us. And so a kind of soul-deep crisis begins to emerge somewhere there in our 50s. We call it a midlife crisis, but what it's really about is not midlife, it's about that Holy Spirit-inspired destiny that's embedded in our soul. And then somewhere around when we're about 65 years old, we realize something. We realize that it is Jesus who will make a lasting difference through our life. Our self-importance is adjusted. Our manic approach to work is ratcheted back. We finally realize that the greatest difference we can make is Well, it's in our relationships with other people and in our relationship with Jesus. You have a God-breathed destiny inspired by the Holy Spirit and embedded in your soul. Each one of us have this. It doesn't matter. Each one of us have this. You see, everyone is given life so that we can make a difference in the lives of other people and make a difference in our world. And our destiny is embedded so deep in our soul that we will never have any peace or any real joy until we are living into that destiny. You know what a lot of the depression is about in our lives? being grossly out of touch with that destiny that God has breathed into our soul. When we're out of touch, there is no peace and there is no joy. Well, while he's still a baby, Mary and Joseph take Jesus to the temple. Following the traditions of the Jewish faith, they give an offering for the purification of Jesus, and at the same time, they present, it's like a dedication of Jesus to the Lord God. I find that interesting that that the Son of God is dedicated to God the Father, but that was the traditions of the day, and Mary and Joseph were just trying to do everything the right way. Well, everything's pretty normal in the temple that day until an old man walks up to the family. Simeon is his name, and he had waited his entire life to see the Savior face to face. Deep in his soul, deep in his soul, Simeon knows that Jesus is the Savior for whom everyone has been waiting. And in that moment, Simeon's destiny is fulfilled. It's an amazing moment, an amazing moment. Moment. Simeon says something that sounds like a blessing, but at the same time, his words are also uh, a bit disturbing to Mary and Joseph. I want to read verses 34 and 35 from Luke chapter 2. Simeon says this, this child, we're talking about Jesus, is destined, listen to that word, destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts, the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. 
Isn't it interesting that Jesus possesses a God-breathed destiny too? So Simeon describes the destiny of Jesus, and we could spend hours on this, and I know some of you want to, but others of you would like to go to lunch today. So I'm just going to hit these real quick, okay? And you can take notes and go back to it, you know, when you would like. But um, here's the first thing. Jesus' presence will cause some to be lifted up to heights they could never achieve on their own. That's an amazing thing. That's an amazing thing, that Jesus' presence will cause some to be lifted up to heights that they could never achieve on their own. But at the same time, Jesus' presence will cause some to fall even further away from the way and the truth and the life who is Jesus. His presence will make a huge difference in your life, highest heights you could ever imagine and beyond or to fall further and further and further away from the love of God. So that's first. Second, Jesus' presence, his power, and his provision will be opposed. Christ followers in our day cannot be naive about this. This is the destiny of Jesus, the destiny of the Son of God, that his presence, his power, and his provision will be opposed. And what that means is those of us who choose to follow him with all of our heart, all of our mind, and all of our soul, all of those of us who choose to live this life of holiness, there will be times when we will be opposed too. And you just need to hear that truth. There's a mythology that has been taught in many, many churches that if you give your life to Christ, then everything is just a bed of roses and rainbows from that time on. You cannot find that in the scripture. Instead, you find this truth. Jesus' presence, his power, and his provision will be opposed. Many will refuse to submit their hearts and minds and souls to Jesus as Savior. Most of us here know this because we have members in our families who have not submitted themselves to Jesus as Savior. And if it's not our family, it's, it's a coworker, or a classmate, or a, a neighbor, or maybe it's a good friend, but we all know people who have refused to submit their heart and their life to Jesus as Savior. But here's the tragedy. For many of those who have submitted to Jesus as Savior, they have not yet surrendered to Jesus as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. They are still driving their own life rather than to allow Jesus to do that. So Jesus will be opposed. And third... Jesus will reveal the inner thoughts and deepest motivations of people. It's part of his destiny. He will reveal the inner thoughts and deepest motivations of people. Now, Jesus' purpose here is not to embarrass, but to convict, and to convict in order to bring us closer to the heart of God and in the very presence of our Heavenly Father. The purpose is to create an openness to the forgiveness of Jesus that is made possible by Jesus' life and death and resurrection. So Jesus possesses a God-breathed destiny. And so do you and I. You have a God-breathed destiny. Simeon is an old man. He's not far from death, but he's stirred back to life and joy and courage even by being in the presence of the Son of God. Simeon had a God-breed destiny to announce that the Messiah had come to save the world. And catch this picture. Here's this old guy hanging out in the church. And he's holding the baby Jesus in his arms. Let that image stick in your mind 
and impact your heart. This old man who knew his destiny, his God-breathed destiny, is standing there in the worship place holding the Son of God in his arms. Let me read the verses again, Luke 2, 34 and 35. This is what Simeon says. This child, the child in his arms, is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. Simeon believed with all of his heart and was betting his life on the destiny God had given to him and that was that he would see the Son of God before he died. Even when he was an old man, even when he was an old man, he continued to believe that God had a destiny for his life. So we're never too old and we're never too young to get in touch with that God-breathed destiny. The Lord is never done with us. I didn't put this in my notes, but it seems relevant. You know, one of the things that as a pastor I've heard over and over and over again, well, I taught Sunday school for 30 years, so I've, I've put in my time. You're not gonna find that in this book either, okay? <laughs> Your destiny is until the day you die, whatever that destiny is. Now, you may need to shift ministry every once in a while, but we need to be in touch with that God-breathed destiny because that's where real peace, real joy, real love come. So do you still believe? Do you still believe in the destiny God has breathed into your life? I'm here to tell you, out of my own experience, sometimes it's a little difficult to keep believing, believing in that destiny that God has breathed into us. But I want you to hear it, the word of God. You still have a God-breathed destiny. I know you have some excuses, and I also know there have been some hard things. So what if things have not happened yet for you? Think about Simeon. I think he was making his funeral plans. And his destiny was still fulfilled. God has a destiny for you, just like he did for Simeon. So what if no one knows your name? God has a destiny for you, just like he had for Mary, the mother of the Son of God. So what if you don't have money or influence or a college degree? God has a destiny for you, just like he did for some shepherds outside of Bethlehem. So what if you're confused or disappointed by all this spiritual stuff? God has a destiny for you, just like he did for Joseph, the earthly father, the son of God. So what if things have been too hard, too long? God has a destiny for you, just like he did for Jesus. But, you say, and I understand because I've had those same hesitations. Maybe you compromised your character. Can't get loose from an addiction or maybe you've been defeated more than once. Maybe you're not sure you believe in Jesus today or are convinced you can't be forgiven or that you've been hurt by somebody in a church. Maybe you have a health challenge or are going through a divorce or you lost your job recently, let me tell you, the word of God says you still have a God-breathed destiny embedded in your soul. Your circumstances don't take that away from you. God has a dream, a desire, something in mind for your life. And I think if you believe that, then you have to make a choice today. You can choose to trust Jesus with all of your heart, mind, and soul. You can choose to let Jesus forgive your sin and be Lord of your life. 
You can choose to make the time to discern God's destiny for you and get some clarity. And you can choose to start living like you're living into that God-breathed destiny. Your circumstances, your age, and your failures do not get in the way of God's destiny for your life. Jesus will use every single one of those for his glory. God will use every one of those disappointments and defeats and failures for his glory in your life. So keep believing. Keep listening. Keep trusting Jesus. And follow him. Trust him with all of your heart and all of your mind and all of your soul. Continue following Jesus and expecting the Holy Spirit to act in amazing and surprising and miraculous ways. Why? Because you have a God-breathed destiny. Some of you know me better maybe than others. You know I like a challenge because I'm basically a competitive person. So I'm going to lay it out here for you. I'm going to dare you. Okay? Some of you say, so what? <laughs> but some of you are like me, and that just did something to you, okay? It got you all pumped up and energized because you're like me. You want to prove that you can do it. And I don't care if it's proving to me. I care if you prove it to Jesus Christ. I dare you to be surprised by the glorious and wonderful and miraculous things that Jesus is doing and continues to want to do in your life. I dare you to be surprised and amazed and inspired by God's spirit-breathed destiny in your soul. I dare you. I dare you. Open your heart, your mind, and your soul to Jesus. Figure it out. What is God's destiny for you? Let's pray. Jesus, sometimes we forget that what Simeon announced that day in the temple was that our Father in heaven had a destiny for you. Forget about that. But when we forget that Jesus, the Father, had a destiny for you, we also forget that the Father has a destiny for us. And then our lives lack the peace and the joy and the hope that are promised through the Holy Spirit. So I pray today that we might just take a little bit of time Sometime today, or maybe it's tomorrow morning. Maybe it's when we go to bed tonight. To just ask the Holy Spirit, what's your destiny for me? What's your destiny for me? I believe you have one. What is that? What's your dream? What's your desire for my life? And when that clarity comes, Live into it. Live into it with all of your heart, soul, and mind. Not to bring glory to you, but to bring glory to our Father. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen.